Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this video, we'll take a look at the AGM 154A Joint Standoff Weapon, or JSAL, for the Viper. JSAL is an unpowered glide bomb that weighs approximately 1,000 pounds. It has a range up to 70 miles based on launch altitude and airspeed. It's a fire and forget weapon that uses INS and GPS guidance to reach its designated target. It can be loaded on stations 3 and 7, either singles or pairs, using the BRU-57 Smart Rack. The A model includes 145 BLU-97A Combined Effects Bomb Submunitions, which are ideal when attacking unarmored and lightly armored units. It is not, though, designed to destroy heavily armored units like main battle tanks. While there are also B and C versions, the United States Air Force only operates the A version. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome to Hatay in Turkey. Now, normally for a video like this, I start in the air close to the action, but in this case, I wanted to show the alignment process for the JSAL, and you only need to do the alignment process if you do a cold start. You don't need it for a hot start, uh, much less in the air. So I've already started a uh, taxi to the end of the runway, and let's get up in the air. heavy in this mission. Okay, rotate. You're coming up. Uh, climb at about five degrees. And three fifty out of gate. And let's do attitude hold. Okay, so let's uh, set up the J-cells. First, as you might imagine, we'll do Master Arm On, Interground Master Mode. Now let's zoom in to the uh, right multifunction display, and we're up on the uh, Storage Manager System, uh, SMIS page for the uh, JSAL A. So you're in Interground Master Mode, and just like the JDAM, we have Pre-Plan Mode and Visible Mode, both of which we'll take a look at. On our inventory page, we can see we have two Brew 57 Smart Racks, each with two AGM. Uh, 154 alphas coming back out again we see a four uh, AGM 154 A's we'll power them on we have an A10 and this will start to count down from uh, 10 to 1 uh, the 10 being the lowest level alignment and 1 being the highest and eventually we get to ALG for a full alignment and then eventually we get an RDY for ready and we'll only see that when the master armor is on uh, the gear is up and we have a uh, weapon greater than zero on the center here, we have different uh, settings for the weapon uh, from the control page. And this is going to come a little bit later. So we're going to have the attack azimuth, the uh, EGEA, which stands for the end game entry altitude, and below that, the ROB or the ROV, and that's our range on bearing. I'm moving over here to the target. Uh, we're going to have three different settings there for our uh, attack angle. And again, that's going to come just a little bit later. Below that, we have a single triangle, and the single triangle indicates we'll be launching just a single JSAL at the target. But we go two, and we're going to see uh, two which will hit in tandem with their ellipsoids, or we can go side by side ellipsoids as well. And you notice below that, we have a number here in feet, and this is going to be the separation of those ellipsoids. So it defaults to 1,000 feet, but we can click on that, say we want 200 feet, 200, zero, zero, enter, and now we're going to have 200 feet between those two ellipsoids. Uh, down here at the bottom, of course, we have the uh, stations that we have loaded with chase cells, uh, and the reverse highlighted is the one selected, which is station 3, which we see right here. So at this point, with the uh, magic of video editing, let's jump to the target area. 
So at this point we are approaching the target and we're going to do a pre-planned attack and I have the uh, lesson in active pause so we can talk about some of the displays. First zoom in to the uh, right display and we can see we're again JSAL up on the SMIS page. Uh, it's powered on. We're in side-by-side -side spacing of 200 feet between those impact ellipses. On the left side we have the targeting pod looking at steer point one which is also our sensor point of interest B. In this case it's a group of uh, companies of BMP2s and a large bivouac. Up on the HUD the sensor point of interest of the SPI is again indicated by the box with a dot in the center. The line running vertical is our ASM steering line or ASL which will bring us in line with our SPI. The little thick line here on the ASL is our uh, release queue and as we approach maximum range this will march down the ASL and when it intersects the flight path marker we're in maximum range which is also indicated by the dynamic launch zone here. Uh, the carrot indicates the current range, uh, the top of the staple indicates the maximum uh, range basket, and the bottom is the minimum. We also see the time to maximum range, in this case 20 seconds, and at the bottom we have the uh, heading uh, to the target, 128 degrees, and it is 33 miles away. Now it's also important to remember that when using a JDAM, a JSAW, or WICMID, they're all INS GPS guided weapons, and they will guide to the speed that was sent into their guidance system at the time of release. So it doesn't matter what you use to set that speed. It could be through the HUD, it could be through the targeting pod, it could be the default steer point. A speed is a speed is a speed. I uh, hope that makes sense. Anyhow, let's go ahead and unpause and continue this attack. So again, we're going to keep the uh, flight path marker right on the ASL. You see we're 15 seconds away from maximum range. The release queue should start coming down the ASL here momentarily. There it goes. Two seconds. Okay, intercepts. Now we see JIZ, which is a very unfortunate acronym, which also stands for uh, JSAL in range. I'm going to hold down the weapon release button to drop them. At this point, let's take off the autopilots. And let's follow those JSALs in. And as you might imagine, the higher you are and the faster you are, the greater the range of your JSALs will have. Go ahead and speed up time. And as I think mentioned, these are uh, great weapons against unarmored and lightly armored units. Uh, not so much against heavily armored units like a tank, for instance. That was close. Okay, let's slow down. And as it reaches uh, above the target, it will uh, burst and rain submunitions of death and destruction on the target area. Okay, burst. Let's get a little closer. Not bad, not bad at all. Actually, let's jump to the F10 view. So if we can see the ones that were destroyed, let's see how much was actually damaged though. That's also very critical. So you can see by the health bars, a lot in the yellow, a few in the red. So for just two weapons, not too shabby. Okay, now let's take a look at this using the visible employment mode. Next, we're gonna take a look at visual mode. Now, in pre-planned mode, we generally you know, prosecute the target through a known steer point or initially through the targeting pod. Uh, with visual, we're going to do it through the HUD instead. So let's go down to the SMIS page, we'll go to visual, 
and we'll keep it just a single JSO this time. Now up on the HUD, we have a mark up next to the G indicating that the HUD now is our sensor of interest, our soy, and we can use the SLU cursor to move the speed box around. And we can place it anywhere here on the HUD and then go Teamus forward to set the location as our speed. Now it's important to note that when doing this on the HUD, it's a lot more coarse than say through the TGP or later through the air ground radar. And this is actually quite accurate to the real aircraft. And what pilots often do is they'll use the cursor on the HUD to get to the general area and then they'll fine tune it through the targeting pod or the air ground radar. So in this case, let's say we see a you know, SAM launch or some vehicle dust on this little island out here and we want to drop a JSL on it. That's what we're going to take a look at. So we'll go ahead and on pause. We'll roll into a little bit. And I'm going to slew the speed cursor on the HUD down to that island. And Team is forward, set that as my speed. And it's pretty far off that target. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my targeting pod as my soy. And now slew cursor. Zoom in. And set that as the speed now. And now we'll roll in the tack and put a JSL on those vehicles. Now you could do it directly through the HUD uh, without going to the targeting pod, but again, you're going to be a bit less accurate. Change that JSL. Let's speed up time. And again, this is a handy way to visually see something outside the cockpit through the HUD, like a SAM watch, and then be able to quickly designate it and put a weapon on it. In this case, it's uh, another company of BMP2s. And again, let's jump out to uh, F10. And it looks like uh, one destroyed, one almost destroyed, and two more damaged. Again, about what we would expect. So folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on looking at the JSAL for the Viper, and I will see you next time.